Welcome back to Ron's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. I'm super excited for this video. We're doing a modification that is long overdue. If you watched the last video, you know exactly what it is. We are putting rims and tires on the GMC Sierra AT4. These ones are taller and wider than what I currently have on there now. And I'm really excited to partner with Brink Wheels, who supplied these guys here. I'll give you a closer look a little later, but first let's load up, go get the mountain and balance, and then we can get into all the details of exactly what we're putting on the truck. Let's go. I do like this box cover, but imagine an electric retractable one that's badass and looks really cool. Just imagine that. Okay, we're just on our way to Scuba Steve's shop. We're gonna get the tires mounted and balanced to the new rims, and then we're going to get them home and see where this takes us. You can use the stairs. That's what they're there for. <laughs> you gotta tell me what you think, Derek. Oh, yeah, those are nice. You like that? I like them. I like them. They're lot. different. So there's like 12 little spokes. I don't yeah. have to worry about the back getting dirty because yeah. you'll never see it. That is nice. But uh, Ooh, yeah, I went, I went for utility. They're a company out of... Miami Brink Wheels. Wow. They reached out to me and uh, we figured out a way to collaborate. So. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, they look awesome. You're programming my sensors, are you? I am programming the sensors. So there's three options you said? Yeah. Which is peculiar, isn't it? Very, well, yes. <laughs> Very rare. Okay, so two is normal, three is rare. Yeah. I like to do things rare. So Derek, do you want to use this one as an example of how to do this from start to finish? Absolutely. For our viewers, For you sure. do that? I will. Appreciate you. I might have to pop that out from the inside. I put it on yesterday. The ring fell off in there. Yeah, no problem. Derek is gonna show us start to finish and explain what he is doing. For those of you that have never busted tires or mounted or balanced tires before. Yeah, so yeah, just put it on the machine, clamp it down on the machine here. Cool. You're just showing us what not to do. Exactly, yeah. He's there a little you go. camera shy. <laughs> And uh, what size of wheels does this accommodate? Up to 26s? 24s? 24 or 24s? Yeah. Okay. I think the biggest we've had is probably a 24, which was on one of Steve's vehicles. Of course, it's one of Steve's vehicles. Of course. Okay. One of the most difficult ones to do. Now, you program the sensors? I program the sensors already, has yep. The valve stem built in. So, I like to put a little bit of tire slime, whatever you want to call it, around just so it can slide on a little bit easier. Which most things in life. <laughs> yeah. And then just put it through the rim. That'll give you some leverage. Put on our valve stem puller and pull it through. Give it a bit of a wiggle to pop it through. It's got a little tiny rib on there which holds it in place. Yes. So you want it past that, otherwise it could fall back into the rim. Cool. Let's grab our tire. Put some tire lube on it. Can you use too much lube? You can, but no. <laughs> the more lube, the easier it goes on. Okay. Drop the tire in there. Drop the arm down. With TPMS uh, wheels, valve stems, you want to make sure that the sensor isn't going to be in this spot when you go on because the tire will hit the sensor itself. So you want to position it on the outside of the tire. All right. Right there is good. Just drops on. Position your bell stem again. Now this arm holds the tire down underneath just so it doesn't try and pop back up. Yep. Before I do that. around nice and slow be 
Easy as that. <laughs> Easy as that. Now we just need to fill it with a burst of air and get that bead to seal, right? Yep. And this time, I'm gonna take the core out so it'll pump it a lot faster and pop the bead on a lot quicker too. Right, so the air will get in there yep. a lot faster. It says not to travel past the uh, core of the yep. pumpstin. Still takes time, of course. <laughs> And adjust your tire pressure to the proper pressure for what the vehicle recommends. Which is 40. Oh, Put the core back in and then adjust your pressure. All right, so you just learned from a master. <laughs> Derek, the master, right there. Now we get to do some balancing. And this machine will do 24s probably? Uh, I think it might go make bigger than 24s. I need either a cone. Need a new cone? So the cone has to fit that diameter properly, right? Yeah. So the wheel ends up being centered on it. It'll work. It will work. I know that's your favorite part, but I did those three already. Oh, come on. Really? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of leaving them on to just wear off. I, don't I hear ya. People do that. Now, if we're lucky, after it rotates for a while, it'll just be balanced, like you planned 100%. it. 100%, yep. Okay. 20, what is the width of these rims? Are they nines or They're tens? nines. Nines, okay. So you're just putting in the parameters. Yep, and they're a 20, right? Yep, 20 by nine. Okay. Put the hood down. And we'll see how much it's gonna shake. <laughs> Very straight and true rim. Wow, that's like nothing for a truck tire. That is a really good. That's how I roll, pun intended. Now you can use whatever color stick weights you want because no one will ever see them. Or if I put them on the outside. Please don't. <laughs> Hammer-ons? Yeah. <laughs> so there's a little laser guide to tell you yep. where to put it? it. tells you exactly, put it right in the middle. Awesome. I always give it a spin after doing one side just in case it changes the inside. It usually doesn't, but okay. might. And it did. The worst is trying to do this in the middle of winter or early spring when your rims are frozen. Yeah. Because nothing sticks to them. <laughs> you usually gotta heat them up or something first. One down, three to go. Last one. No, I lifted all those up there at the same oh, time. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired now. <laughs> awesome. There you go. Thank you, sir. No problem. Appreciate it. Uh, anytime. Anytime. Tomorrow? Maybe. We'll okay. See. Thanks, buddy. Sounds good. Sounds good? You approve? Mechanic approved. All right. Have a good one. See you later. All right, we're back at the garage. As you can see, I'm getting ready to put everything on. When I take these wheels off, I'm actually gonna show you on one of them the spacer and how easy it is to remove. You might remember that I put a one and a half inch spacer on all four wheels because I wanted a stance where the wheel would stick out just a little more, give it that aggressive look. So the good news is we don't need to do that with these new wheels because they have an offset at zero, which actually makes them stick out much like these do here. But before we get into any of that, let's have a closer look at these rims sent over by today's sponsor, Brink Wheels. So a little over six months ago, Brink Wheels reached out to me to see if we could do a partnership. If you watch some of my other videos, that's where I was talking about shipping issues to get into Canada. 
So I drove down to Minot, North Dakota to pick these up, which is in the previous video to this one. Now these ones here specifically are 20 by nine offset zero. So they actually work out really well to have an offset that's in favor of not having to use a spacer and get a nice aggressive stance. So that's why I picked these. I went with a little larger tire, which I'll tell you why I went with the Open Country AT3 a little later, but this is in a royal bronze finish. It's a semi-matte sheen. Now you'll notice right here, it says flow formed monoblock. So that gives it extra strength and durability compared to say a cast wheel or a multi-part wheel. So this is lighter and stronger than you would typically get with some of the other manufacturing processes. Doesn't mean it's the lightest, but it's on the lighter side. So depending on the size you pick, it's gonna have a different weight associated with it. They also have a really nice clear coat on here. They say it's 18% thicker than the clear coat that you may find on other wheels. That's gonna make it more durable, especially around here with four seasons, all the mud and snow that we have to deal with. Having a good clear coat is definitely something that we want. You'll notice that in the dish in behind, we got a lot of room for big brakes. We've also got uh, dual hole setup to fit other manufacturers. So we already have this ready to go for my GMC. This wheel's also hub centric and lug centric. So you know that it's going to be centered on the hub when you put it on and you're not gonna have to worry about any vibration as a result of it being out of center. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's start taking the wheels off, putting the new ones on. I'm just gonna show you the spacer on this one here because I know this wheel has never been removed since everything was buttoned down properly. So we'll have a look at how easy it is to take off the spacer in case we were wondering what is it like to take spacers off a couple years later. Again, we don't need to put spacers back on. Actually, they're not gonna fit and I'll explain that right now. Because the back of these wheels are flat, there's no recess for the existing lugs that poke out about a quarter of an inch to recess and fit in anywhere. So we cannot use a one and a half inch spacer with those wheels. We could use a 1.75 inch, but because the offset is zero, it's gonna have the wheel sit out a little further than the current offset that's on the factory wheels. So it should look similar, but it's gonna be a bigger tire, a bigger wheel, and overall better. So let's get started. Okay, the wheel's taken off. As you can see, I had to push on it a little bit just to work it loose. Now we'll take off these six lugs and we shouldn't have a problem. There is thread sealer on there, but we shouldn't have to heat it up. It should be soft enough that we can back these out. Let's give it a shot. Well, as you can see, it wasn't so bad. We just got some thread sealer on here. I'm just gonna wire brush it a little bit, make sure it's clean. And then we will mount the new wheels on. Got our hub centric ring here, help keep the wheel centered on the hub. Don't want to forget that. Now, if you get confused by all the holes that are here, because we only have six lugs, we want the ones that are measured furthest apart for this wheel, so we want this one here, that one there, that one there. You can tell because there's more material at the bottom here, less up top. Less material, more up top. So we want the ones that are farthest apart. So there, there, and there will be our six lugs for there. Don't forget to pick up some locking lug nuts and a key. Great security feature if you don't want these stolen. Yeah, there's workarounds, but this will deter people from stealing your wheels. So why wouldn't we add them? These will look really good in gloss black obviously to fit the theme of the vehicle. So we'll get all of these on and then we'll torque them down. It's a nice little tab on these caps to go in either hole depending on your bolt pattern. There we go.
worth every day exploring now. A whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me. A whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Yeah, I just wanna be great. Well, we finally did it. We put some new wheels on the GMC Sierra AT4. Personally, I really like the style. Earlier in the video, I talked about going for a utility look or an overlander look. That's the theme that I'm going for. And I have a lot more plans for the vehicle that will involve the wheels like this kind of fitting that future theme. I'll leave the glitz and glamor for the Cadillac Escalade. Nothing wrong with fancy rims like that, but for what I'm going for, and this is just some of the first stages, I thought this look might be the way to go. I guess we'll see, that's part of the fun. Now I did say I was gonna talk about these tires a little bit. I've done some driving around, so I've got some first impressions. I'm only gonna cover some of the highlights right now because I think it'll make the video too long, but I will give you a follow-up talking about my experience with these tires and why I picked them out in a future video. Thank you for all the suggestions and all the comments from all the previous videos about which tires that I should get. It wasn't an easy choice, but I did ultimately pick these because they fit my needs, they fit my price point, and they weren't extremely heavy. So thanks again, but they are a tire. They're eventually going to wear out and I can try something else. But so far, I'm not regretting the decision. And to be honest, finding stock in Canada is not a fun game to play. All right, let's talk about these tires. We went with the Toyo Open Country AT3s. These are wider by about 10 millimeters. They are a LT 285 60R20. That makes them a 33 and a half inch tire versus the 32.1 inch. So that gives us a little over an inch in height or overall diameter or 4.4% taller. And then when we compare this guy here, because it's also narrower, this one's got more girth, more height. That means it's gonna take up a little more space within the wheel well. The dirt tracks the truck came with are only a six ply tire. We have the 10 ply version of these Toyos right here. That makes them more durable and also have more towing capacity. The downside is they are a little bit heavier. There's a couple more things while I got the Duratrack out here for a comparison. Don't forget my truck specifically, I have the Bilstein 5100 ride height adjustable shock installed, which gives us about an inch extra in clearance. Also take a close look at the sidewall because this tire is a little bit wider. Our sidewall is very close to what we had before, which is what I liked about how these tires look. This is actually 4% smaller, roughly, but I think they look pretty close when it comes to just the meat of the tire overall, which was still important to me. Another big consideration for me was this little symbol right here. This is the severe snow and winter traction rating symbol. As soon as you look for that, it narrows down your selection dramatically. So what this really means for me is that in the severe cold, the compound that these tires are made of, this rubber, is gonna perform better. It's April right now, look out there. So now that I've had these for a few days, I've been able to drive with them, give you a couple first impressions. So they are a little bit stiffer. And because the width is a little more and the height's a little more, it does make the steering feel a little more weighted. Nothing dramatic, nothing negative, just feels a little bit different. But the biggest benefit so far is that the noise is gone. Lots to hear though, you can hear my tires just a humming. So I know fitment's on everyone's mind and that's okay. I wouldn't lead you astray. There is a little bit of rubbing. It's right here. You can see on the inside of the mud flap, that's only at full lock when I'm going backwards. And then there's nothing up in the front fender. And that little bit of rubbing there is more of just a scuffing. It's not grabbing the edge of the mud flap and pulling it. But spoiler alert, I am doing a mud flap delete because in a future video, we're doing something up in this area. So you'll have to tune in to see what we're gonna do. Thank you to Brink Wheels for helping this project move forward. If you wanna check out what Brink Wheels has to offer, head over to the website. I'll leave a link in the video description below. And do not forget to use the promo code Don's Life to save anywhere between 50 to $200, depending on what you order. Hopefully you liked today's video. Hopefully you found it equally informative. Help the channel out, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing and we'll talk to you next time.